adaptable to many situations, responsive to teaching, and with a high degree of problem-solving ability, the expertly trained army dog has become a valuable ally to the American fighting man. You have a dog that did eight combat deployments. He did Silver Star Medal Honor recipient stuff night in and night out. He apprehended bad guys with weapons in their hands. He took beatings for you uh, when he got on bites. He found bombs. He roped out of helicopters. I mean, this dog was everything that should be talked about. Most of the scout dogs were the ones that really turned the war around on the North Vietnamese, and they realized it. We knew we were being hunted, literally, so they started sending snipers after them. So they put a price tag on their head. So we had to deal with not only walking point, but do and know that we're being hunted at the same time. You kill those dogs, we want those dogs dead. You guys go out there, we'll reward you for everyone you kill. They were trained to be mean, they were trained to kill, and that's what we used them for. In general, the Korean people were terrified, terrified of the dogs. They knew what their role was, they knew, they believed. They believed that the dog could smell, that they were Korean and different. They had a lot of kind of superstitious beliefs about dogs. It's not like your friendly little dog in the house. It's a dog that protects your life and you protect his life. This is a dog that it will go to the nth degree for you. And that's the reason you get so damn close to them. What? <clears throat> Good boy. Atlas, else, place. I woke up 20, 30 feet away from the blast site, propped up against the wall. And um, when, I, when I came to, uh, Benno was punching me in the face with his nose because we were attached to each other. And uh, I remember I woke up and I just, you know, in shock almost, and I grabbed his ears. And out loud I looked and I was like, well, I got both my arms. I mean, it was chaos, you know what I mean? There's a massive crater in the middle of the road. Our, our bond was, I mean, was tight, you know? Uh, we started really meshing as a team. Um, and I think a lot of that just had to do with trust. Dogs have been used in warfare and trained to fight the enemy since ancient times. As war and conflict continues through the centuries, so does the use of the combat canine. It can be used on stairwells, it can be used in deep hallways, it can be used in tunnels, bunkers. The need to have dogs that were explosively imprinted and that would interdict humans just exploded. These four-legged dogs are absolutely, you know, to me, uh, the biggest combat multiplier we have out there. They can detect rust that's been painted over. They can detect cancer in humans. They can detect tremors. You know, what else can they detect? It's up to us almost to decide what they can't. From World War II to the global war on terror, elite combat dogs have been called upon to perform the most dangerous jobs in the most dangerous places against the most dangerous enemies. Regardless of what kind of feelings you have for that animal, regardless of, of what kind of bond you have for that, that animal, if you're like, hey, no, I don't feel comfortable sending the dog, well, if the commander's like, well, if, well we're gonna send people, it's like the, the dog's gotta go. We have worked out in cooperation with the South Vietnamese for the complete withdrawal of all U.S. combat ground forces. Burials, cemeteries, in every one of those base camps that had military working dogs that were killed in action. It's probably the most difficult emotional experience you can have with your dog because you're leaving him. We knew that the dogs were classified as equipment and they would not be able to leave Vietnam. They believed in training. Um, they trained the dogs at Camp Carson. They went with the dogs to Korea. They were together from beginning to what they believed would be the end. We were in the 8th, 8th Army, 54-55. I was 19 years old, that's my dog, Willie. 
We were at Wee Jambu. But I'm already starting to cry. I can't help it. It's hard. You can't walk with somebody for two years and love them and tell them your life story. And then walk off and leave them. You can't do what it's hard. Their bond, sometimes closer than the bond that they had with their fellow soldiers. And all of a sudden, kaboom, flashes of light and, and explosions started happening. The dogs are just barking and growling and, and just scared as hell. Having saved countless American lives while paying the ultimate sacrifice, these American heroes can only speak with bravery. The bonds is built and training gets solidified in the battlefield. And unless you've actually done it or experienced it, you don't understand it. Benno in the beginning was, uh, was a tool to me. We grew a bond. We ended up becoming insanely close that when he died, it was, it was like a, a piece of me had died. For us not to give them a shred of healthcare um, is unacceptable. I mean, we spend more money on plastic forks and paper plates than we do retired canines, and that's a fact. I know we lost 26 or so for a time. It may be higher than that now, but that's at least 26 men to come back, right? That's how we figure it. These are animals that didn't never ask to do this. They do it for a ball. They do it for a pat on the head. They don't do it for benefits. They don't do it for health care. They don't do it for any of that. But what we owe them is we owe them all of that. On top of everything else we bring, all this millions of dollars of technology, the biggest combat multiplier on the battlefield is that four-legged beast we're bringing out there. The War Dogs, a voice for the voiceless.